What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Michaela Sierra, and I'm back with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have been rocking with your girl this far, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving y'all all of the tips and tricks on how to take the perfect bite wing x-ray. I'm talking no cone cuts, open contacts, everything that you and your dentist would love to see in a bite wing x-ray. So if you are a seasoned hygienist, or if you are in hygiene school, just get into the radiology portion, then you know that bite wings can be great or they can be horrible. One of the things that can make bite wings very difficult is the patient, especially if they have a smaller mouth and a horrible gag reflux. So the method that I'm, I'm gonna be showing y'all today, it actually helps to make it more comfortable for the patient. Every time I use this method, well, I use this method all the time. I don't do anything else. I don't use an XCP ring or anything like that just because I feel like it's just a lot of extra material. So anytime I use this method, patients are usually instantly noticing that there's a difference. The first thing that they usually tell me is, wow, that must be something new. That wasn't as uncomfortable as I've noticed how it was before. So before I show y'all the method, let's just compare a bad bite wing to a good bite wing. So basically a bad bite wing would include overlap contacts, which is what the dentist is more so gonna be looking for. Now, if you work with a dentist who is very picky on x-rays, then you wanna make sure you get those contacts open. Some dentists aren't as picky with x-rays, but a lot of times, just to be courteous, you wanna get a good x-ray so that the dentist can you know, evaluate in between those flossing areas. And it just makes it a lot easier to detect certain things when you have open contacts. So the picture above would be considered like a bad bite wing x-ray. So as you can see, the contacts are completely overlapped, meaning you can't even see in between the teeth. So honestly, if my hygiene assistant took a x-ray that looked like this, I would personally have them retake the x-ray because I know that my dentist would not be able to evaluate that. Or if even myself, if I had an x-ray that was that looked like that, I would retake it instantly. What I would call a good bite wing x-ray is one, the right contrast, meaning it's not too light and it's not too dark. And that goes based off of your x-ray equipment. And two, the contacts are open and all of the teeth are in the image that the dentist needs to see. So typically for a bite wing, we do two images on each side of the mouth. We do a premolar bite wing and a molar bite wing. Now, sometimes when a patient has a smaller mouth, you can actually get one bite wing on each side because you can see everything that you need to see. But typically it's four images, two images on each side. So a good bite wing would include open contacts, you can see everything that you need to see. So this here is what I would consider a good by me x-ray. And it was taken by yours truly. But um, nine times out of 10, my x-rays are coming out like this with this method that I'm gonna show y'all. So definitely um, try it out, see how you like it. Do not always be lenient on an XCP ring because sometimes you might get into an office who has no XCP rings at all. So stay tuned, watch this method, try it out and tell me how y'all like it. So I'm gonna be using a size two digital x-ray sensor. You can also use this method with a size one sensor for kids. This method is actually highly recommended for kids because it just makes it easier to take the bite wing. And then I use these spongy tabs, but if your office has the paper tabs, you can do the same method using those as well. So I'm gonna take my spongy tab and I'm gonna stick it right on the very edge of the sensor. And always make sure you put your tab where the, on the side where the cord is because as we take the x-ray, the cord is always going outside of the mouth, never towards the throat. So make sure you put it directly on the edge. And then as you can see, I have equal distribution for biting and look how small that is. It makes it more comfortable for the patient instead of using that hard red piece for the XCP ring. So this just shows a little closer up of what it should look like. As you can see, my tab is right on the very edge of that sensor on the side where the cord is. 
The goal for the perfect x-ray is to make sure the edge of this circle is covering the edge of the spongy tab as you can see it pointing out of the patient's mouth. So typically when I'm taking the x-ray, I have this patient smile big with their teeth showing so that I can see the edge of the white tab. So when you're angling your x-ray tube, you want to bring that x-ray tube over until the last part you see is nothing. So if you still see tab, then you don't have the full x-ray sensor. So bring that x-ray tube over until you can no longer see that tab. When you can no longer see that tab, that is where you need to stop and then you are good to take your x-ray. So again, I place the x-ray tube right where that edge of that circle is covering the edge of the tab. Always make sure you have the patient smile really big and you should get a great x-ray. Your posture also has a lot to do with taking a good x-ray. Do not be afraid to bring that chair all the way up to your height so where that you're comfortable and you're not bending your back. Have the patient smile really big and boom. You should get the perfect x-ray almost every time. So I hope this video was informative and helpful for you to take great bite wing x-rays. Definitely try out the method. Comment below if you already use the method or if you've tried it out and you find that it works for you. Um, but yeah, I'll see y'all next time for the next video. Peace out.